here today again with Gary Sikich reporting from my basement. Uh, Gary is the principal of Logical Management Systems. I am the president of Enigma Forensics. We've been talking on our show previously about the coronavirus and the impact. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about the current data trends and what's happening. Gary, thanks for uh, being on the show remotely. Thanks, Lee. It's uh, kind of an interesting way to work. <laughs> it's the, the new reality probably for a while, huh? I think for, yes, a little bit more than two weeks, that's for sure. Yeah, so I want to pull up uh, some of the data that we were talking about earlier. Uh, a spreadsheet that um, we had here. Is that up on screen for you? Yes. Okay, great. So it's showing that this is data that was obtained from the John Hopkins website. Mm -hmm. They've got a, a place where you can download the historical data, um, which uh, I showed you a little earlier. Let me just pull that up. So if you see here, you can go um, on the map tool, you can actually scroll by clicking um, on the tab. Internet's running a little slow. We discussed that previously. And yeah, well, welcome to the world of uh, <laughs> not enough pipe. Yeah, so you might not have noticed it, but there's a little section that says admin one. If you hit the right arrows, you can scroll through and cycle through and see the data reported differently. First, it's by country. Mm -hmm. And we're um, now at 41,708 in the US. Um, when you click, you can see the total. It's running very slow today. Yeah, John Hopkins, I know that, that one of the issues with their website is so many people are using it, that it, t about this time of day, it starts to slow down a bit. Um, so it's, it's kind of a challenge to get in there and see, uh, see the data as it stands. Yeah. So, but I just um, noticed on the, on the uh, statistics for today that the U.S. stats at noon, when I checked, I was doing a webinar today on uh, hospital pandemic planning and drills. Uh, and the U.S. Ra uh, infection rate has jumped up pretty substantially. Yeah. Uh, I want to show you some specifics of, of concerns as we drill down. Mm -hmm. I pulled the top 10 states. And you can click here. You can see by states and regions, you can mm -hmm. see New York is getting devastated right now. Uh, then Washington and then Cook County, Illinois here is, you know, running right up next in line. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I found interesting is as you pull the historical data out that you can get off GitHub, um, we can see here's New York. That's a pretty scary curve. And it's a trajectory that doesn't suggest it's going to get any better anytime soon. Um, and then you have Illinois, New Jersey, and whatnot. But what was real interesting is we had a cross. Illinois is this line right here. Mm -hmm. Illinois is, uh, where is Illinois here? We've got, actually, what I did is I pulled out New York so I could get more zoomed. So excluding New York, you can now see what's going on. And Michigan, that didn't have a ban until they just announced uh, today that they're instituting the, the lockdown. But Illinois, uh, more dense, more, you know, more likely to get a, a contagious outbreak than Michigan, in my opinion, because they quarantined early enough, you start to see that at least so far, Illinois is holding out. Now, I, I think that number is going to jump up. I think the, the number... They haven't fully reported the uptick for today yet, mm -hmm. but it was interesting to see uh, both Louisiana and Michigan and, Flor and Florida jump up and surpass. And right now, you know, Florida doesn't have uh, a ban in place. Georgia doesn't have a ban in place. What do you think is going to happen with uh, Georgia? Well, I think I think I think what your statistics are showing, and it's interesting, is that is that the early adopters of shelter in place and uh, you know 
working remotely, et cetera, kind of the bands, if you will, uh, the early adopters of that are finding that, that social distancing is actually working. The late adopters who ha have yet to kind of come to the point of doing shelter in place and whatnot um, are finding much like the parallel with Philadelphia and Denver during the Spanish influenza, uh, Denver closed the city very quickly, very little in terms of uh, issues that they had. Philadelphia, on the other hand, kept everything open and actually did a parade uh, to try to raise money for bonds for World War I. And as a result, they had a significantly higher uh, infection rate. And so I think you're seeing a parallel in terms of history and, and what's happening today. So I would say that those states that are late adopters are probably going to see a higher rate of infection. Um, the other thing it would be is we, if you can, I, you'd have to do some manipulation on data with this, but uh, is to look at those states which have large cities, Chicago, uh, New York City, Los Angeles, uh, some of the bigger cities are going to have a significantly bigger concentration of uh, casualties, if you will. Um, that is going to result, it results from this, the fact that people are living in close proximity in those cities. Uh, the other aspect is that if you think about it, a lot of downtown populations uh, don't have the, uh, how do you put it, the infrastructure uh, to do a lot of at home cooking. Uh, so it, it's either they, they don't have the storage facilities for food or they just yeah. don't cook because restaurants are so plentiful. And suddenly we're finding that with the restaurants closed and other things uh, being shut down as far as businesses and whatnot, that uh, there's a greater dependence um, for people to be you know, a little bit more self-sufficient, if you will. Yeah, it's certainly going to get interesting here. Well, thanks for coming on the show again and talking about this. I'm, I'm sure we'll have some more things to talk about soon. Thank you for having me. Great, thanks.